Good afternoon and welcome to this uh, brief bound rack session. Uh, today we are going to be speaking on the design and performance characteristics of TAP as a service. I'm Anil Rao from Gegamon and along with me are two of my colleagues on this project. It's Carl Suzuki from Fujitsu Laboratories and Radeep Banerjee from NEC. So Radeep will start this off with an introduction to the project. So good afternoon everyone. So let us first introduce what the exactly Tapper service is. So as you can see, uh, Tapper service is basically an extension of the Neutron networking service in OpenStack. What it actually offers is an API which allows you to mirror the packets which are coming in onto a particular port into another uh, section like a VM or another port where you can actually analyze that packet. So these pa the ports which are uh, there, which you can mirror, are basically the ports of the VM or a container or a bare metal. Tapple service provides isolation uh, for the tenants as well because uh, the mirroring, the port mirroring, would only occur for uh, the if the source and the destination ports are for the same uh, tenant. If they are for a different tenant, it will not allow you to mirror the uh, mirror the packets. So it uh, provides that demarcation between the tenants. The port mirroring uh, can be used for uh, a lot of different uh, use cases. For example, network analytics, then uh, application security, and as well as troubleshooting to identify if there is any problem with the network or not, if there is anyone who is using a denial of service attack or any other uh, mediums with which your network can be hampered. So let me explain to you how the TAPL service actually works with the uh, Neutron API. So initially, uh, we need to create a TAP service which is basically an uh, overlying layer which tells us which VM or which uh, machine uh, would be the uh, destination machine and which port of that uh, machine would be used where the mirrored packet would eventually land up into. The monitoring VM is usually attached to this port to consume the traffic. The second one is a tap flow. The tap flows are basically the source uh, points from where the packets would actually originate. The tap flows would uh, have a type of direction, like if you want to monitor the ingress packets or the egress packets or both. So those can be uh, mirrored from the tap flows from the source port to the destination port. So for example, like we have here, we have got two VMs. The first VM is the VM1 and the monitoring VM is the second VM. We create a tap service on the second VM with the destination port where the packets would actually land up. Then we create the tap flow and we have got the source port on the VM1. If we have got two or more VMs from which we have to actually copy the packets, we can create different tap flows and land them up on the same destination port. And we can analyze the packets. The TAS API, as uh, seen here, provides two types of uh, operation, uh, the different CRUD operations. So you have got the tap service, create, delete, list, show and update. And similarly, for tap flow, you have got the same type of API points. Now, to explain further, uh, let me introduce Anil Rao here. Thank you, Riddhi. So now that we are familiar with the basic uh, overall uh, concept behind the project and the workflow, we'll take a look at the high-level design, and we'll start slowly diving deeper into the complexity of this project. Our project has been designed to be a very modular in nature. So we have the familiar concepts of plugins, agents, and drivers. The task plugin resides on the controller node, the OpenStack controller. And it's essentially fronting this project. It serves as an extension to Neutron. So we are actually sharing the same Neutron database. We have our own tables in there. And we attach our REST APIs as extensions of the Neutron API. The task agent sits on the respective uh, compute or network nodes. And this serves as a platform independent section of the backend for the task implementation. What I mean by platform independent is that depending on the nature of the different drivers you're placing underneath the agent, we can start supporting a variety of switches and platforms. Our reference implementation is built with an OVS driver. And that's what we have in our Git repo right now. But there are other companies and special interest groups that have built different backends for this project. A small word here that is, if you're actually working in an SDN type of environment where you're not utilizing the regular Neutron backends, you can plug your uh, SDN controller directly into the plugin. 
So you branch off from there, and then you can take control of working with the OVS or any other SDN-capable switch. Examples of such are the work done by Miracura Networks, as well as if you were interested in plugging in, say, Open Daylight Controller to it, you would plug in directly at the TAS plugin level. We'll take a look at how this model is now fitted onto the different nodes in an OpenStack cloud. As I just mentioned, the front end, which is the TAS plugin, is essentially parking itself as the plugin of the Neutron server. If you're familiar with the Neutron API, you can see the TAS extensions in there. We have built, uh, actually, extensions to the Neutron CLI, and we are also uh, integrated with the Horizon dashboard. So it all looks familiar from that point of view. The TAS agent could sit on a compute or a network node. In this diagram, we are showing the compute node. And this receives RPC calls from the plugin. And those commands that Radeep was just mentioning, like task create, delete, or tap flow create, et cetera, are passed on to the back end. In this particular example, we have shown an uh, OVS driver. So the OVS driver is the one that will actually implement specific OVS flows to implement different aspects of the task program, as we are just going to look in a next slide here. So for those of you who are familiar, the open vSwitch is typically uh, used by Neutron in, by using two separate bridges. And what I'm showing here is for the compute node. So you have the integration bridge, which is the top left box in here. And that is the bridge where all the ports from the VM instances are residing. If there is local traffic going on between the ports and they're on the same, let's say, subnet, the traffic never even gets out of that integration bridge. Now, if the traffic were to leave that host, it would propagate through that patch port that is the, into the tunnel bridge. In the tunnel bridge, there are a set of tunnel ports that actually send the traffic out to another compute or network node. For TAP as a service, we have actually introduced a third bridge in here, which is our TAP bridge. And this bridge essentially isolates the mirrored traffic, and then we can enforce certain policies in there, such as QoS policies, filtering policies, et cetera. So we'll go through a small animation to see how the traffic is flowing in here. What I'll first demonstrate is the production traffic, which is shown here in blue. So if two ports were communicating with each other and they're on the same subnet, they could be communicating directly inside the integration bridge, never leaving that. On the other hand, if the traffic were to leave this particular compute node, it would follow a path like this, where the traffic from that port is going through the corresponding patch ports and out via one of the tunnel ports. Neutron has sufficient logic already built in to identify the correct tunnel port. It uses an initial broadcast, and then it settles down onto one of the ports. For TAS, what we do is, let's say we wanted to monitor that port in question, the leftmost port in the integration bridge. We mirror the traffic by putting certain flows in the integration bridge, and we divert the traffic into the TAP bridge. Inside this bridge, we can now enforce certain policies, and such as filtering policies or QoS policies. Now, in this case, if the traffic were, if our monitoring VM was on the same node, we will redirect the traffic back into the appropriate port for the monitoring bridge. That port would be the destination port that Radeep was mentioning a few minutes ago. That's the destination port of the TAP service instance. Now, in another situation, you might have the monitoring VM residing on a remote node. In that case, we divert the traffic out via one of the tunnel uh, ports and it goes into the next compute node. And in the compute node where the monitoring VM is residing, the traffic would come in down this path. We are using a similar <coughs> method that Neutron is using today to identify the tunnel ports. That is, we also initially do a small broadcast. We start learning the locations of the receiving end, and then we update ourselves so that the broadcast is not necessary anymore. With this basic functioning, I will switch control to Kaz, who will talk about a new addition to our project. Thank you, Anil. Now, I'd like to talk about traffic isolation in Andre network. In the uh, current reference implementation uses the same Andre network um, to transfer production and mirrored traffic. However, it is desirable in many situations to use separate underlay network for the mirror traffic. This can offer 
uh, improved performance and physical isolation of mirrored traffic. So we designed and implemented traffic isolation in the underlay network by using uh, flow-based tunneling in order not to increase the number of tunnels. Suppose uh, VM1 and 2 is running on a different computer node, X and Y. Uh, a mirrored traffic is generated in uh, computer node Y and uh, transferred to mirror VM, uh, uh, monitor VM uh, running on computer node X by uh, functions of uh, top as a service. The uh, left, left, uh, left figure shows the uh, is a shared underlay network. And uh, this, uh, in this case, the uh, production traffic is uh, affected by mirrored traffic because of uh, shared underlay network. The right figure shows the uh, isolated underlay network. We uh, designed and implement to solve this issue. Uh, this slide sh explains uh, uh, what is uh, flow-based tunneling. In this model, uh, one open flow, can, open flow port can handle traffic in, uh, from uh, multiple tunnels. The open flow tables can distinguish uh, among tunnels based on their IP endpoints. Here is an example that uh, uh, we can uh, configure the uh, flow tables. Uh, we can add two uh, traffics to uh, one uh, OBS tunnel port. Uh, this figure shows, uh, this slide shows the uh, traffics, uh, tran uh, transmission throughput of uh, shared underlay versus uh, isolated underlay. The uh, horizontal axis shows the number of packets sent and uh, vertical axis shows the uh, throughput uh, the left figure shows the result of a uh, shared underlay. Uh, the uh, blue, uh, blue uh, production traffic is uh, reduced to half by red mirrored traffic. And right figure shows the uh, uh, result of isolate, isolated underlay. It is uh, realized that the uh, production traffic is not affected by mirror traffic. And this slide shows the performance measurement of uh, shared underlay. Uh, it seems that uh, performance drops with smaller number of packets when the packet size is increased. And when the packet size is 1,024 bytes, uh, the performance drops about, uh, with about 50k PPS. That's because the uh, underlay, uh, 1G underlay network is filled with uh, production and mirrored traffic. And this slide shows the uh, performance measurement of isolated underlay. While the results are similar to the previous uh, slide for small packet size, an improvement is seen with larger packets. The mirroring overhead is negligible when the number of packets sent is below 70k PPS, regardless of packet size. Thanks, uh, Kaz. Like, that concludes our presentation. Like, uh, this is a live ongoing project with OpenStack. And here's some information on the project. We have our Git repository where the source code resides. We also have uh, weekly IRC meetings, and we welcome more participants to join us in this effort. Thank you all very much.